Golf plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm here in Bangkok at the Chatuchak plant market. It's a Tuesday, so people are setting up today. Uh, the official day of opening is Wednesday, but a lot of the good stuff will be my mom, by the way. A lot of the good stuff are gone usually by tonight, so I don't know how much I can film here because a lot of the friends photography, a lot of them have signs that says no photography allowed. But I have a screen capture of a translation to ask for permission. So I'm going to see how much I can film. But this is the Disneyland for house plant collectors worldwide. There's a lot of cacti, succulents, tropical plants. Uh, there's just so much to cover here. So I'm just going to get started. So there's these cool little pins that you can actually pin onto like your potted plants. How cute is that? It's got different animals. It's got a mushroom here. <laughs> if you don't have enough fungal issues, it's got ladybugs here to scare off your mealybugs. And it's a lot of the bunnies. Oh my god, slugs. This is super cute. There's little baby flamingos here. There's teeny tiny, by the way. Very nice. This is in flower. I don't know what this is either. How beautiful is this? All right, so I'm gonna resort to voiceover in the future so this is two months later we have lost a lot of audio thanks to some interference here by the entrance so here's a cacti booth this is a gymno gymnocalcium gymnocalcium babies they're 200 bucks and this about 575 us dollars there's actually many many varieties of them they're actually variegated this is why they come in many many funky colors there's actually many species, many hybrids represented here, but I don't know most of them. In fact, I don't know anything about them, but the care is rather similar. You want to give them bright and direct light, and then you want to back off with watering. You want to water them very, very infrequently. And correct me if I'm wrong, but they do flower and then they form these clumps, and then you can separate these clumps, and that's how you get the babies. This market was predominantly cacti succulent dominated three years ago, and I think these days, they're still pretty popular here, but we're going to be seeing a lot more tropical foliage in this tour. So this is actually by the main entrance of the Chatu Chak market. So when you come in here, uh, this is the first stand that you will see. And of course, the stands change every week. And then I'm, we're going to make a left from then, from there onwards. Here are some terracotta pots. Look at this beautiful log terracotta. They're differently designed, meticulously detailed and they're meant for different types of plants this little baby one is only five but that's like 15 us dollars 15 cents sorry and this shallow pot here is obviously made for succulents although some skin dapses could look really nice in there next up we have the variegated adenium i think uh, i'm not really sure but i have i kill them left and right because i'm an overwater so these are not the genus that's perfect for me but they do like full sun and they are actually really really beautiful variegated it's my first time seeing them and the price is so good on them by the way i'm gonna try to include the price where possible but if i don't convert it it's divided by 20, 35 to get the us dollars and it's multiplied by 420 to get the indonesian rupiah so you can do that on your own now thai people they specialize in certain species and genus this is the plumeria the variegated ones and they grow everything with passion with love and with experience this is something that we indonesians are lacking so these are in the plumeria uh, and then they are very very mealy bug prone they're actually quite difficult to keep alive but um they're they're actually very easy to propagate we'll talk about that a little bit later but you don't want to overwater them and you need to be on top of the pest control and they love full sun now there are many many varieties of them from what i searched there are around 11 species of them but of course because they do flower so readily there's so many beautiful flowers and then i'm sure they do hybridize really well because that is one way that you can hybridize plants is by cross-pollinating them i've seen small flowers i've been seen big flowers and look at how beautiful these are they don't even look real you can pluck them off and spread them around your bed sheet so you look like you live in a four seasons hotel <laughs> but yeah this is something that we indonesians need to learn we need to specialize in certain genus of plants there's so much beauty in every species and by the way this is a bit of a side advice if you really must bring this home you can actually just cut it off by the stem because we can just be propagated by stem even without the leaves if you just stick a bare stem in the soil it will sprout branches and vines in fact they do prune very well they do branch out really really well when you prune them 
Here are the regular adeniums. Let's take a minute to enjoy their chubby bottoms. They have really, really beautiful trunks. All of them are unique and they do branch out in random places and this is why I really appreciate them. They are to be treated like the desert plants, so you need to give them desert-like conditions, full sun and don't overwater. This is the variegated version and they're just so beautiful even without the flower. Look at that growth point there. It's insanely beautiful. And that's a bigger specimen back there and it can get huge. Moving on, we're in the fern area. So this is the recurring theme and what I like about this market is that everything's organized by genus, by type, and Thai people grow some massively beautiful fern. And look at this accessory there, it looks like some tourists just hanging out there. So they're very good at doing plant accessories to enhance their plant experience. This looks like a footed fern of some sort and there's some Boston fern down below. And I think they do like a lot of light. Some of them can take a bit of direct sunlight. Some of them have been grown in full sun and you cannot let them dry out completely, but you do not want to drown them as well. And I have a feeling that Thai people do fertilize them quite liberally. This is why they grow so fast and so big here in Thailand. I have not seen fern growth like this in Indonesia. And yeah, this is a footed fern, I guess. And moving on next, we have a, another succulent and cacti a booth here. I don't know how to describe this species, but it is flowering beautifully. Look at that red. It's just even the camera cannot capture it well. But there's so many means. Oh, by the way, there's going to be a lot of traffic noise in this episode because we're just by the roadside. People tend to stop the car and just buy things and then just drive off, which is really a really good market. But this is 50 baht, you guys, for this. Uh, baby cactus and of course some of them back here are a lot more rare. There's so many many rare cacti here that would cost a lot more but everybody have interesting shape and form and some of these are about to bloom as you can see here they're protruding they have all these flower spikes coming up and some of them do have the species ID listed uh, on them and a lot of these nurseries are actually higher up in the elevation or higher in the mountains regions which I hope to visit someday. I hope to visit some really nice cacti succulent nurseries in Thailand. And there's so many collectors, so many demand of them. Uh, they are very slow to grow, so I really, really appreciate it. And they're easy to kill as well. But as you can see, there's so many varieties here to explore. This is truly, truly a heaven for cacti and succulent collectors. And this one here, my goodness, look at the de design, look at the details on this. It looks like coral. <laughs> So uh, cacti and succulents are also heavily poached in nature, but I have a feeling that these guys in Thailand are, are definitely mass produced. So in Chat to Chat, they actually bring out the best of each uh, of, of their stock to show here because everything must go. Ooh, and I do have this species of mammillary at home. I bought it last time. But again, yeah, they do have a big nursery to support this much stock. These are huge. This is my hand for comparison. I think this spikes. The if you run into it and this is a clump look at this beautiful clump i guess you could really separate them if you really want look at this oh my goodness look at this all right and there we go we lost audio again so i'm gonna be voiceovering for the first 10% of this video is annoying and I know that I cannot sound excited as I was live when I was filming it I'm so bummed out about losing the audio but yeah <laughs> So I'm gonna try to comment as much as I can I don't remember exactly what I said on the spot But look at this wonderful wonderful living things and they are just on full display here I cannot imagine the diver diversity here and this is just a representative of what they have in their nursery because again each of these stalls are one business entity and they have large growing facilities and they only bring out the best of the best because in this market things have to go they're only here for three days and a lot of them were trucked here from very very far away places and here's some um, uh, species id and some prices uh, feel free to pause the video to check out the prices and look at details on some of these plants but yeah, all of these are usually sold out in three days. So they're not fooling around. They're not kidding around. They're bringing out the best specimens, the most popular ones and the most vibrant and beautiful, uh, healthy species. Look at these. These are horneas, if I'm not wrong. 
this I, I keep killing mine because I'm on over water again. This is a recurring theme for me. And look at this beautiful, wonderful cacti flower. This is a, some kind of horny. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in, in this genus, but it's something that I would really love to get into in the future when I have all the time in the world. And I'm starting to get a little bit more relaxed with my plant collecting as I close down my store, my only plant store. Um, but yeah, here I am having a difficulty narrating exactly what I said two months ago. But I really urge for you guys to come to Bangkok, take not just one day, you need more than one day to look at this flower, it looks like a Hoya flower. You need more than one day in this market and it really wears you out, you're exhausted because everything is catching your eye, your mind is darting. Oh my god, look at this, look at this caudex. Oh, how beautiful. Um, anyways, your mind is just darting from place to place. Everything's calling out to you. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to take in and to enjoy. So if you're a plant lover, I definitely recommend for you to come here and look at this beautiful succulent. I don't know, even know what it is. Feel free to just again, pause and look at the species and do Google it up if it's of interest to you. But a lot of the things here are in fact flowering or in a very, very healthy condition. Here, look at this. Look at this, darling. It looks like a crown. So mine, I actually own one of this and it always flowers. It's always in bloom and it blooms in random places on the crown. And here's a bird's eye view of everybody. Sometimes they're best viewed from up above. A lot of them are in flower too. And that, that something is pollinating it right now. It's a... I don't know, something's in there, something's burning in there. <laughs> so as I guess, I think these guys do flower and then they form these clumps. These babies start appearing and then when they get big enough, you can separate them and just pot them up. But I could be wrong, I'm no succulent and cacti expert. So moving on, we have some really, really weird, really strange plants. And this really calls out to some of you guys because I have friends who are interested in these very interesting plants. They're not the easiest to care for. This is a beautiful caudex form. Specialty collector for people who love these types of plants. This is so Let's look at that. This is a total botanical experience to be here. This is better than any botanical garden. I, if I lived in Thailand, I would be so broke. How oh, this is coming out of that stem. Just so beautiful. All right, and there are some more strange looking plants. And I think a lot of them do come from Africa. I'm not sure from the south or northern part. I've seen some of these uh, on Instagram. But again, I don't, I'm not a specialty in this. Look at this beautiful caudex form. Some of them are quite rare. And again, a lot of plants are actually being poached in Africa. So we have to be careful where we get our plants from. But again, in these markets, I have no doubt that they were actually mass produced. Uh, and this is a beautiful aloe or an aloe hybrid. Look at the vibrant color. Yeah, it is an aloe albiflora, as I mentioned. There are actually many species of aloe to discover. Some of them have chubby leaves, some of them have interesting colors, and there's many hybrids of them because they do set flower readily. But just look at these amazing, beautiful plants with all these interesting forms. These are truly collector's items. It's not for everybody, of course. It's uh, I, I personally can enjoy it. Look at this beauty here. But oh my god, this is just so interesting. It, this is basically something that is mounted onto a Euphorbia tri trigona, if I'm not wrong. I have a video on that coming soon. But look at these weird forms. Interesting shapes on these. Oh my god, this is actually very, very difficult. I had many takes to do the voiceover. This is taking too much time. I'm just gonna go over it really quickly. So look at this really very beautiful variegated cactus. I'm not even gonna start doing over my mistakes if I, as I make mistakes doing my voiceovers because this video is taking too long to edit. And yeah, sorry you have to face my frustration, uh, but yeah, I'm channeling that through you as you can see. But look at this beautiful. Okay, let's take a minute and enjoy. Just look at the beautiful pictures. Look at the beautiful video of these plants and ignore my frustrating commentary as I'm super stressed out now trying to give you a voice over. Um, we will be moving on to tropical foliage a bit later because again, we are showing some cacti succulents at the beginning, which is going stall by stall from the entrance. 
and there's just so many interesting just everything just caught my eye right now but we will see some beautiful alocasias colocasias philodendrons monsteras don't go away for you tropical foliage lovers just enjoy just get mesmerized by these really really interesting forms keep your minds open and just keep in mind that everything here evolved in their natural habitat to look the way that they are now this is some kind of kalanchoe for 50 baht that's really cheap it should be illegal to sell them though because they put out babies like crazy look at the things at the tip of its leaves these are all babies and they will fall onto every pot that you own and little babies will emerge like weed so yeah but it, they're actually really beautiful to look at they're very easy to grow they're good for confidence building uh, and inexpensive these are really beautiful i can't remember the name right now but they have all these uh, looking glass at the tip of the leaves and that actually allows light to go directly into the center of the plant for photosynthesis and this means that they cannot cannot be in full sun <laughs> imagine if you let full sun in it's just going to burn it, it th that plant has adapted itself so that it can live in medium to bright conditions but not direct sunlight okay i'm skimming through too many but there's too many beautiful plants here that i overlooked there's some kalanchoes some i don't even, i don't know what this is this looks really interesting i actually saw this plant in a bigger specimen in mr sapasiri or his name's also home we will visit his home in no pun intended in a few more episodes he's one of the best collectors in thailand or probably in the world of course, I'm going to offend too many people when I say that, but his collection is truly wonderful and I can't wait to share that episode with you. So stay tuned. More Stapelia here. Sorry, Stapelia is the genus name. I made a mistake earlier. Horne is just part of the one of the groups in the genus, but they do look so beautiful when they are flowering. They're supposed to smell like corpse. It should smell really bad, but I don't know. I don't have my first hand experience with them because I overwatered every single one that I ever bought. But this is just how beautiful they look. They look nice even without the flowers, but all of them are here on display. This is just how great the experience is coming here because you get to see different flowers, everything's in bloom. And of course, all of these are described, all the species are described based on their flowers. So you really get to know their species and all that. And a lot of them do have the tag, the species ID, which is an improvement from three years ago where not nothing had IDs on them. So you can actually learn a little bit about them unfortunately none of the shopkeepers here speak english look at this beautiful variegated euphorbia trigona that's amazing these are some calicia repens here very very difficult plants i mean they're easy to grow but to get them beautiful like this you need to constantly propagate prune and maintain them because they're such fast growers they're such easy growers so uh, anyways i digress so what was i saying before um, none of the stalls owners here speak any English, so you have to use your body language, you have to be creative when you talk to them. Uh, these are some euphorbias, again euphorbia mealy if I'm not wrong, that we passed by. And here are some more of these gymnate, uh, I don't know the names. <laughs> but there's a lot of them, they used to be popular at some point and I have a feeling they still are, but uh, this is a specific group of people. And this is the exact same mammalaria that I have. And it's always flowering it is so darn cute um, they do like uh, bright bright indirect light it can take some direct sunlight maybe even full sun because of this fuzziness is actually preventing too much light from entering the plant from burning it up so they may actually like a little bit more light than your regular cacti succulents but if you give them low light that's one way that you can kill them or if you overwater them that's also one way but these are also easy to uh, invite mealy bugs and other pests like scale and next up we have a pot store look at this it's a cacti pot that you want to may want to put a cacti on <laughs> and these little teeny tiny pots they just really capture my heart there's just so many different shapes and forms Everybody's so creative. We don't really have this kind of assortments in Indonesia. Unfortunately, we only have the few rep repetitive design that everyone copies each other and just gets overused. So a lot of my pots, in case you have commented on my videos before, were actually bought in Thailand and I have some of them that were shown in this video. I, I can rec like this one right here. I actually own that one. So 
I do come to Thailand and buy a lot of pot because it is something that we can actually bring back with us with no problems. Um, so yeah, if you're ever in Thailand, do make sure that you have enough baggage allowance with you. And here we have some variegated bananas. They are the hype right now. Everybody wants them. These are the, I don't know what these are. Uh, they're not the blood bananas because the blood bananas don't have that neon on them. So if you know what this is, feel free to shout out in the comment section down below. But it is a truly beautiful electrifying color on a banana. They're fast growers actually. They're easy to care for. And Thai people love caladium. There was a caladium hype. There's a gold rush for caladiums last year. But now the prices has come down a bit. They're very, very much hybridized and very, very much selectively bred. So there's so many forms and colors of them. These are colocasias, variegated colocasias. This is the, sorry, I'm going so fast. This is more bananas, but we passed by some Syngonium milk confetti. That was, I guess people say it was made in tissue culture, which is something we're gonna discuss later in this video because this is a very long video. Strawberry ice, Syngonium, now becoming cheap. These are some variegated homaluminas. They're more common here in Thailand than it is in Indonesia, even though I suspect they're endemic to Indonesia, but they're just more, much more appreciated here in Thailand. Or maybe their mother plants were shipped here at some point and the Indonesians did not grow them out in time, but I could be very wrong. Oops, sorry, there's some weird footage of me dropping my phone, but here's some colocasias, like white lava, if I'm not wrong. These are very, very trending a few months ago. I'm probably still trending now. And some beautiful Sansevieria. Oh yeah, and there are some beautiful Sansevieria boots here and aloes and agaves as well. If you're into that, there's some stores, but we did not zoom in on those. There's some ZZ, ZZ Ravens back here and I think back behind it is some ZZ Zenzi. They're very, very inexpensive here in Thailand. Again, Thailand's are, no, that's the ZZ Zenzi, which is the dwarf ZZ plant that I really love. So Thai people are really, really good at multiplying things and growing them at scale and making it affordable for everybody. So they're the really good candidate for export and very good for mass production. And for consumers here, buying plants are not an, not an obstacle. Price is not a problem because everything is affordable here. Some variegated uh, whale fin Sansevieria, the Sansevieria Masoniana, if I'm not wrong, but look at how beautiful, look at how they're sold. You can actually just take these in your luggage because there's no soil involved. But you did not hear that from me. That is not an advice that I give people. But technically speaking, you could <laughs> if you can get away with it. But look at how beautiful neon striped this Sansevieria is, or Dracaena, if you want to be politically correct. But I think they've been reclassified as Sansevieria, but I could be wrong. So this is a beautiful Stapelia, this is a variegated one, a lot of succulents back there. Oh my, sorry, I'm going really, really fast with my voiceovers. Oh, it's frustrating because I was really, I had this energy. Oh, this is a really cool moss pole, but it's filled with coconut chips instead. We don't have this in Indonesia, we only have them in, with moss, but something to learn from the Thai people. But anyways, I, yeah, I, I try not to channel my frustration in this voiceover experience because I really did sound very excited on the spot and I shared a lot of really good insights. And look at this beautiful bed of coleus. I have a soft spot for coleus. There are so many varieties of them, most of them are hybrids and this is what their flower looks like. When you have your coleus flower, make sure you cut it off because they will set seed and the seeds will appear in every single pot that you own. They will turn into weeds very quickly. And this is exactly why they hybridize so easily because you can actually cross pollinate the flowers. But this is why we can enjoy so many different shapes and colors of them. I don't know what this is, but it's in flower. This is just the foliage that will turn green after it's, it's the pink in color, but yeah. Um, here are some variegated monster or variegated plants stall. There are a lot of them in stock here. Variegated Carcentianum, uh, White Knight, White Wizard, Domesticum Variegated, Paris of Verde, Thai Constellation. Uh, a lot of the Thai rare plant sellers or collectors do have booths here. So here are some beautiful Thai cats. I can't remember the name. Very good price on these. And then here are some more plants that are very common and they're already in hanging baskets so you can pick them up and hang them right away. 
pay attention to the price. Look at how this big pot here, this is massive. This is very slow growing, but this is Apipramnum Marble Queen. It's a very slow growing plant. It's only 100 baht. This is insane, you guys. This is why the plant market is thriving in Thailand. This is why you see these plants in restaurants, hotels, airports, hospitals. You see them everywhere in Thailand. It's a beautiful city to visit. This is actually the variegated Boston fern. The Naprolepsis exaltata. And again, this is a fern uh, booth here. And they're all super healthy. Look at that, no browning, no crisping. The Shkidia back there. No, sorry, this is the Peperomia scandens variegata, if I'm not wrong. Look at how big they are. This is exactly how we should sell them. And I'm disappointed with Indonesia at this point because we don't sell plants that are this healthy or this full. This is a Heliconia that's variegated, 200 baht. And look at the flowers. Look at the flowers. Everything is full pot and blooming. And of course, for you Hoya lovers, this is a Hoya stall. And Hoyas in Southeast Asia are more prized for their flower than their leaves. They're sold when they're in bloom or they're, when you buy them online, you see only the photos of the flowers, but never the leaves. I think that's a Carnosa, by the way. Uh, look at how big, yeah, this is the Carnosa uh, Crimson Queen. Look at how full pot they are. We don't have Hoyas like this in Indonesia. We don't see them sold. If you find one in Indonesia, they will be very expensive. No one would be able to afford a full pot of Hoya like this. But of course in um, Bangkok, there's growing facilities that are growing them efficient, efficiently, effectively. And it's, yeah, it's such a joy to be able to look at this beautiful, oh, look at all these flowers, they're just in bloom. So if you want to look at Hoya for blooms and Hoya flowers, these are Dishkidias, the so maybe they're not Dishkidias. I don't know, actually, so maybe this is the Hoya Numula. Okay, I'm going way too fast, but some Stackhofers down below. But if you want to look at Hoya blooms and study the flowers, come here, because every week you'll see different Hoyas in bloom. They only bring the blooming Hoyas here to this market. Um, but of course, there's a big operation behind this stall where they grow a huge collection of Hoyas. That's the sunrise behind. Uh, okay. Look at this! This is huge! These are huge flowers! My goodness, this is a Hoya and the leaves look like this. Sorry, someone's trying to do tra a transaction. And these are nice! Look at them! That's the Hoya Terii Variegata. That's the uh, Pachyclada. I have never seen them flower, but I guess this is what the flower looks like. I've seen these, but I, can't, I have never, again, I guess these guys have actually, uh, they, do, they probably have large nurseries and these are just picked for this week. It's market. And this is really, really cool too. Look at these huge flowers, wax, waxy, waxy flowers. And next up, we have the uh, Dishkidia pneumolaria dragon jade. We have featured this in two episodes ago. Feel free to check my channel out for an episode on that. Here are some Hoyas, it's very, very beautiful, white leaves. It looks like the Dolico Sparte leaves, but it's not. And the flowers, I don't know, it's just something. You have to look it up to know what it is because I don't know what it is. There's so many different diversity of Hoyas. And here we have some beautiful, I think, full sun loving plant from what I can judge, but it is probably fast growing. And I guess that is the name the name of the, the species. Really, really beautiful. And this as, as well. Look at that. It's snowy, it's got a pink new growth. Probably nice for landscaping or if you just have a table and you set it on a sunny table. Something tells me that these guys like full sun. Oh my goodness, Hoya uh, uh, Polyneura. This is massive. Look at this, how chubby the leaves are. Oh my goodness, these, are, these go for a lot of money in Indonesia. We can't really grow these. We've grown them successfully there. And this is really stunning too, this hanging. And there's a lot of Acavaria. Get too close to it because there are people in the way. This beautiful tie here, look at that. 
It looks like a and this is so interesting. There's so many different forms. So many. You're gonna have to pause the video and enjoy these because I can't I can't slow down. <laughs> so there are a bunch of caladiums here. Not this one, this is a syngonium. A lot of them. They love they love caladiums here in Thailand. They can fetch for a lot of money. Look at this one here. This is so beautiful. I think that's a Thai beauty. They love full sun. There's some more back there. So beautiful. Got this one. And that one. This is magnificent. There are larger specimens back there. I'm surprised that the Hilo Beauty can get that this big. Mine is like super small. Some Colocasias mixed in there. This is quite something. These are aloes. But look at the texture on the leaves, the colors. This is quite beautiful. Look at that. Some uh, Calicia, Tradescantia. And here we have some Caladiums and they love to sit in water. And they love for the most part. Or some direct sunlight. Prize for their red color. And this one here is just so beautiful. Look at this one. Syngonium batik and there's some peperomias here and a little bit of begonias. I, I think these are the more common begonias. Seeing them around. This is super beautiful. This is the ficus ruby. And here are some beautiful calatheas. That's a nice fern here. This is really, really inexpensive for 100 baht. I don't know if this is the barrel cactus and some alocasias here silver dragon lauterbachiana and this is a nice i uh, think tenanti look at that they're tight normally they grow close to the ground unless i'm wrong unless this is completely something else next you look at these pots <laughs> My goodness, this is so beautiful. Like if you look at it from up top, it's like that. And if you look at it from the side. Beautiful, really well done. This one right here, look at this. Oh. <laughs> this is the logo, I think, the name of the brand. I really love the... And, and creative soul but it's got upside down eyes how do you even concept that how do you even execute that every single one is different sometimes you just gotta be in awe <laughs> and they're sitting in water also a very draining substrate mavi sunrise I don't I have never seen this one before. That's a Ferrous mask that we saw earlier. It's around in the market. It's Yeah. This is the Esquelenta Black Ripple. I guess they have different names. This one's called the Aloha, but I think back there this, they're called the Illustris. Just a few more voiceover to go and I'm all set. Next up, we have a really, really creative pot store. Look at this. This is very, very Japanese influenced. Feel free to find them on Instagram if you want to check out more of their products. But just look at how, how do they even conceptualize this? This is amazing. Uh, some of these pots are more basic. This looks good in every interior. Oh, actually this looks like stacked bowls. Look at stacked pots. <laughs> it's really a trickery for your eyes. And these are cacti shaped pots. And I really love the color. Look at how tiny this one is. My goodness, a tiny plant will live here someday. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it brings a smile to my face whenever I look at these pots. Some of them are just well done, well made, well designed. And there's this accessory that I guess you can stick in next to your cacti as a companion or a roommate. Down below we have some more tiny, tiny pots, so you can definitely 
bring a lot of them back if you are in the mood for pot shopping here and they're very very affordable um i don't know what i'm doing here but yeah <laughs> it's really hard to to remember what i said two months ago um here are some tissue cultures this is a uh become very popular here in thailand these are variegated i believe white knight white wizard or white princess the price is on the bottle it's like 250 baht i do have a uh, episode talking about tissue culture how it's done its futures but uh we're going to be exploring more tissue culture in the future this is a piper by the way a really beautiful piper and peperomia turboensis a very very underrated peperomia that's easy to care for and easy to grow easy to propagate some maranta liconoria but anyways we'll be talking about tissue culture a lot in this channel because it is truly the future of house plants whether you are tissue culturing rare plants or common plants uh, to make them you know more mass uh, accessible to everybody this is a beautiful jewel orchid some philodendron gigas or micans or oh no i can't remember that this is a philodendron lupinum and they did put the mature form leaves on the on the photo uh, some domesticum variegated uh, i'm not gonna list everything in here but these are uh, what used to be rare plants this is i think a narrow form of the palmanii but this used to be very rare and unattainable but now everybody can afford them they're being mass produced this is peppermint clusifolia tricolor really really beautiful i do, i actually prefer the regular variegated i don't like the extra pink in there but um here's 380 baht for like a white wizard or white princess don't know but a lot of them are coming in from tissue culture if you see them in um, the same exact size you see many of them in, in displayed the same way they're probably tissue cultured because vegetatively propagated plants will have different shapes forms and sizes some anthuriums anthuriums by the way these hard shaped leaf anthuriums are not that well liked here in thailand we don't we're not going to see a lot of them here in this thailand tour philodendron gigas here and some vagiis back there oops and i dropped it yeah so these pink princesses are actually grown from those vials and uh, it's a living example that they can grow quite well i interviewed someone for tissue culture yesterday and she has said that the tissue culture plants are absolutely normal that they can also flower and seed just like the regular non-tissue cultured counterparts next up we have some beautiful common plants these are some different aglonemas actually and from different bakias put together they're flowering look at them they're just so happy here i really love to check out their first but i usually cut them off so that they can focus on the new growth but this is i believe still in the aglonema area or maybe this is the different bakia when you see these weird uh so i call them like the neon type uh, splash or spots they're different but this is an aglonema uh, cutlass, one of my favorite ones because they're so long. This is definitely a Diefenbachia when you see something neon like this. They come from a Diefenbachia. Beautiful, I actually have been seeing them around in supermarkets here locally. They're quite expensive here but I think they're a lot more affordable back in Thailand. They really create a pop of color in your landscaping. But because they have such little chlorophyll, I don't think they're fast growers. Just look at how elegant they look and that little bit of green around the rim. This is a very, very elegant different bucket that's on my wish list. Oh yeah. And I think this is probably a Monstera. Is this Monstera? Yes. Monstera Pinati Partita? Uh, no. Monstera. Monsiam. Monsiam. Yes. Then it's putting out a flower there. Look at that and that one too. I think this is the Pinati Partita, I get all the Carcentianum, I don't know. But I covered one of the flowers in one of the video. Look at how strong the veins are on these leaves. And it's, this one is trying to add, uh, exhibit some of the epiphytic behavior, it's trying to find a pole soon, or a wall to climb on. Okay, so this is the most ridiculous thing I've seen. Everybody's in bloom. A field of blooming cacti. How crazy insane is that? This is a heaven for pollinators. We, saw, we did say, see one get pollinated earlier. But look at how translucent and elegant the flowers are. I had mine bloom often at some point when I was living at my dad's place. But now it's pretty sad. I don't know why he hasn't bloomed for many, many 
months maybe because i'm not happy in this home so it is not happy but yeah i want to get into them at some point i want to learn a little bit more about uh, care and propagation uh once i get to it but right now we are all focusing on our tropical foliage plants i guess that's why and here's a ficus uh, stall here this ficus taniki look at that bright red new leaf it's so adorable these are cute little baby plants and that's putting out a pup from underneath this is probably tissue cultured sometimes when you tissue culture them they put out a lot of pups because that's the hormone that they were given in their flask so yeah a lot of the plants here are sold cheaply and this is a dendrobium or a dendrobium hybrid a lot of them are sold cheap here because they're mass produced and they're healthy and they're growing in the same uh, professional conditions so the, the care is very standard of them in the nursery this is why they are able to scale them up but we did see one of these in our hotel uh, hotel lobby there were actually many of them in bloom in the lobby but a lot of them that were not in bloom were hung outside of on the trees around the compound of the hotel which is a very smart move these guys do multiply if you give them good care so yeah this I hope to see more of these indoors in, in and more people's homes and in public spaces again if you care for them correctly you can set them outside when they're not blooming you can bring them inside when they're blooming and enjoy them for a few months i believe these are cattleyas but i could be wrong um that's a new uh, that's a genus that i'm not familiar with i'm only familiar with the other more common orchids these are some calatheas that's the black lipstick before that it was the mosaica and there's a dishkidia. I think this is the pectinoides back there. Colocasia, white lava babies. There's a lot going on in this store. This is one of the stores that are selling a lot of really random stuff. This is a Tenante or something. Someone's gonna call me out on that, of course. The Calatia Macchiana here. Beautiful foliage. They love low light, the rattlesnake. Calatea lancifolia. And I don't know, these Dishkidias, look at them. Look at how crazy they look. They really call out to me. A lot of them are actually hybrids, but I don't think this is the Pactinoides because they have smaller leaves, but this is probably a hybrid. And Thai people are magnificent at growing Dishkidias. They have deep love for them and they can grow them so well. Something that I haven't been able to master. I haven't seen many nurseries in Indonesia master them. A lot of our Dishkidias stocks actually come from Thailand. I know that because they're sold exactly like this in stores in Indonesia. They're sold in the coconut husk in the same wire hanger and things like that. So we do import them here, unfortunately. Um, that's the imbricada, possibly, the imbricada or the green apple. There's so many common names and, and hybrid names that we don't know. There's the Dishkidia uh, Facebook group that's very active. If you're interested to learn more about them, feel free to find it on Facebook more uh, orchids here i don't know what these are but look at that this something's 20 baht like how, i hope i show it on the screen yeah these little tiny orchids is 20 baht how cute is that <laughs> they look nice on like a work desk yes all right so i've spent hours on this voiceover it's mentally draining i'm gonna stop here and i want to apologize because yeah there's gonna be a little bit of a choppy audio moving forward but I, maybe you can if you know me well enough, you'll know what's on my mind as I show you the images of the plants or accessories that, was, that is in question. And the footage does get better over time. As we enter the later part of the video, the audio becomes very smooth and it becomes perfect at some point. So please uh, be patient. And again, I beg for your forgiveness, but I will be back here. I'll promise you I'll be back in Bangkok in Chata Chuck Market very often. So if we miss out something here this time, we'll see something else next time. These flowers. Maybe it's I'm not gonna go inside if I don't wanna dis This is these are how kids. And look at the that they are This one has Form. Oh, 
precious. Thousands and thousands many and here bro or tits and they absolutely consume this here really them like mangoes I know this is not plant related mangoes <laughs> so this is Please. Me, Adam. Selling food here, in case you're looking for something to mount. These are easy. Look at these. They're grafted on this really thick stem, forbia stem. Look at them, just rows and rows of them. And that, that is just uh, kind of littered on the floor. So beautiful. And I guess you can bring these back. You just need to put them onto media and then they should grow. So if again, you're getting with you back home. Uh, camera's not going to focus. Yeah, there you go. You can bring this little guy home. And bath here. One, one, this 40. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, seven. Ten of these twenty. So I was okay. wrong. Yeah, ten. Of Already much. Yeah, beautiful. Look at all these different uh, shapes and for sizes. Six for one hundred. You can eat. Yeah. Wow. And this one you can bring uh, aeroplane. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> bare root. Yeah. Bare root. Yeah. Look at this one. This is putting out. So I guess the babies just kind of pluck out if you see those on the floor on the potting mix I mean they just kind of fall off but these are rooted so they're most likely going to survive to pluck this out they're not rooted yet so many cute little ones here this is Disneyland look at those flowers look at these blue look at Wow! I think that's a pollen, probably somewhere down below. I see some fuzzy, powdery substance that may not even show up on the screen. So I can show you a bird's eye view. This is what it looks like from up top. I usually spend hours here. Look at this! Stefania erecta! <laughs> This is my this is how small they are. I really would love to get to know one of the propagated and grown. This is how <laughs> I don't know what this is, but look at the leaves. And this is only 80 baht. And I wanted to show you these. They look like little little giant trees out of Africa and these two this is so elegant sorry look at these they're like miniature trees are perched on rocks I'm gonna show you my finger here so you know the size aren't they precious this is so beautiful this is a hundred baht only and they're putting out leaves after leaves. And they are all different. Look at the characters of each of these. They're all very different from one another. I really love this booth from afar. It's, I think, known for the flowering plants. Some of these are commonly used in landscaping. There's some anthuriums back there. Anthuriums that are flowers and bromeliads. Look how beautiful the bromeliad flowers are. They're unreal. And these guys too, I don't know what this is. This is maybe a crassula of some type. This is a... I don't know, but the leaves look like they are 
I don't know. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Yeah, but look at the flowers. <laughs> Beautiful orchids. And then they also do well hanging. Look at those bromeliads and the flowers. All manners of begonias here. Finally, we got begonias. One in red. There's a lot of alocasias, bambinos. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Um, it's a Kalankoe. Maybe it is. The leaves are a Kalankoe, but they have more flowers than leaves. I don't know how that's possible. Usually they need a lot of leaves. Unless they prune the leaves right before they sell them here. And look at these wispy ones. I think they're heavier than I think. I'm trying to lift it up. There. It's huge. It's humongous. And because they're not expensive, I think you can just buy them and you know try to maintain it as much as possible. But if it doesn't uh, survive for the next you know six months or a year, you can always get one. And this is how a sustainable plant market looks like. There are more ones over there. Look at this. I'm upset. I think I think somebody's buying a lot of these. Yeah, yeah. I think they're talking about volumes there. They're transactioning. I love it. They're, they move plants in volumes here in this market. And it's for everything. Residences, hotels, restaurants, businesses. Because you can see it. Look at this individually wrapped. So cute. The demand for plants is to live with plants. They want to collect them. Or just to have them beautify uh, their spaces. These agonimas. A lot of different ones. I don't think we're gonna get into Aglonema City. Those are looks really nice back there. I'm gonna get closer actually. This is really beautiful. Yeah, look at that. This dreamlike colors on these. Is this different for Aglonema? Uh, no. Dracaena? Ah, okay. <laughs> I was corrected. These are Dracaenas. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's really nice. But these are definitely Aglonimas here. Thailand makes them really well. They hybridize them. They also tissue culture them and they, they collect them. And Thai people love to have color around their homes and in their living spaces. So they're not shy about having pinks and vibrants, oranges and all that. This is really beautiful. I have an episode dedicated to Aglonema in an Indonesian nursery. I'm gonna link that up so you can watch that. Really, really nice assortment here. There's some more over here. These are, these are definitely Dracaenas. This is really nice. So this is huge. Yeah, I've seen people sell those back there. I think this is like some kind of live moss or for epiphytic plants. I'm not sure, I can't guess. These, actually, <laughs> I have a... I'm here, elegant, easy range of conditions and care. This is the larger one of those. I actually only have one tiny growing, but they look nice. Some more caladiums here. This is a hundred baht, which is very inexpensive. But I don't know caladiums that well, but there are varieties that go for a lot more than that. Um, but they are so easy to propagate, so fast to grow. Into it, I don't fall as they did go up really fast over the past, especially now here they fetch for quite a lot of money uh, but those prices will come down soon this is super cute I bought this one time for my friend's apartment for a housewarming gift this is the Sansevieria oh I can't remember the the name it's been it's just that kind of day where you just don't remember everything 
but I like that they're jam-packed into this. And sometimes they sold, they sold them woven, so they're like twisty into each other. But look at them like this, so nice. A whole bed of them. And back there too. Beautiful. I'm really glad every shop that I go to and I show them that screenshot, which I'm gonna flash on the screen, to ask for permission, everyone said yes. It's so welcoming. I remember last time it was a little bit more hostile, but I think the plant prices did come down quite a lot. So this is a, a Tillandsia booth here, and they're all, all manners of Tillandsia. Some of them are bloom. This cluster here is blooming. How oh, nice. Maybe this is not a cluster, they just kind of left here on their own. And I really love these little bowls. And this is not expensive, you guys. Tillandsia's, this is 80 baht here. And that one is 10 baht each. This thing is 10 baht. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my heart is melting. This is so beautiful. Imagine these like on a bookshelf or whatever. And if it doesn't make it, so be it. <laughs> it, can it can survive for at least three months or so. But of course, if you can care for it and let it thrive, that would be good. This is 20 baht each. There's so many different ones. I know we don't like to talk about prices here, but I'm a sucker for inexpensive plants especially ones that i can smuggle back to <laughs> but disclaimer i'm not going to bring any plants back uh to indonesia i guess i'm super broke <laughs> because i've got too many plants in my care already as it is look at this one here beautiful beautiful 80 baht but if you you know you're coming here and you did not hear this from me again but you can absolutely just chuck this in a suitcase <laughs> if you can get away with it look at this one they're just laying there if you can get away with bringing them home, they are really, really beautiful. This is, they're all so healthy too. Look at that. There's so many to choose from. This is beautiful. This is, I think, about to flower if you look at the spike. And it's gonna have a beautiful, beautiful flower spike. These guys, they flower like there's no tomorrow. So beautiful. And these guys, uh, because they're sold here, on their own but if you mount them well if you know how to display them they can look really nice this is nice too in the hanging basket here this is only 60 this is only 60 baht you guys and this is the one that we saw a few days ago where it's a uh, spirally and they can get massive they can get really beautiful <laughs> i'm in heaven i'm really tempted to to buy some but i can't I have a long trip ahead of me and I have too many plants at home that I can't even get rid of. But if you are living abroad, come to Thailand, come to Chattachak Market. Even if you don't want to bring any plants home, even if it's just to learn, to appreciate, it takes a whole day. Just give yourself at least six hours to be here and it's going to be super hot. Yeah, I'm actually only done with maybe 20% of the market. I haven't done most of it. So this video may end up being a few episodes long. Caladiums, oh my god. <laughs> Beautiful, right? I think there's species, uh, or maybe there's just one, but they all, yeah, they're started from the uh, base here, but all the leaves look different. And this is so nice too. This is the pink Congo. Shout out to Kaylee Allen for uh, talking about this plant. It's controversial. Out there, look at this. this probably a hybrid if it's got an English. And this is a Ethereum. Look at all these beautiful flowers on these. Well, not flowers, modified leaves. Seacup. And these are all bromeliads. I love that each stall really specializes in something. And again, these guys have massive I'm sure, and these are just the ones that they They are the ones that are the freshest and they want them to sell fast. So they are, it's a good price. I think they look good in like, uh, they're used commonly here in like restaurants and things like that. Like a lot of the traditional restaurants would still have these on display. They also make excellent vertical garden. Talensia here, oh my god. And these are looking beautiful. This one is either, let me see, it's either flowering. Yeah, it is. It is starting to flower. And these ones are in flower. This is the more common one. I have this. And this one flowers differently too. And after they flower, they're gonna start putting out babies from the base. I know I say that a thousand times, but 
This is a beautiful Zero Graphica. The lens. Yeah, this is also nice. This is the Zero Graphica. And there are more. They said I can restock them here. And these are uh, probably also very easy to bring home with you. I meant to bring. These exactly. But they, they've uh, included the, the, the photo. I think this is. Some of. This is. That's probably like in the ginger family. But you can absolutely <laughs> sneak this in uh, and bring them home. But you did not hear that from me. <laughs> Some more beautiful orchids here. This one is... Stephanias. They're endemic here in Thailand. And look at these ones here. Arranged like this. Oh, look at this. And it's got this pink rim. This is a hosta. And that looks really weird. It looks like a Stefania. Silver, like green, and the codex is a little bit different. But it's grown in this manner. Absolutely stunning. And oh, that. I saw it. Oh my god, I'm gonna, let me squat down. Look at that. Uh, Stefan, I think some of those Subarus, so there are different manners of Stefanias. This one's only. A This is with uh, interesting leaves. Uh, plant collecting. Command these, they're not easy. A video on how to care for them and propagate. Hopefully, I'll get it. Um, and uh, they may be endangered. Oh, here. And yeah, I think this is the regular lady that's friendly. Yeah, she's not here. Um, I'm gonna I insert a picture on you what she looks like. But these are uh, plants. That, uh, these are all stuff. This Stefania tuberosa. It says here. But these are right condition. And you did not hear that from. I need to put it illegally. Bring. Oh my. Okay. Not actually. Okay. This is word for it. This is only twenty baht. This is what I talked about earlier. That we saw earlier. This is the the babies, I think. So you can. Wow. Really beautiful. Some tell me what. Cheap. So. Yeah, and there's some. Uh, when I. There's Stefania erectus, and. It More over there. I really am not. And there's more here. Yes. I'm upset with this plant. How beautiful is that? Some baby side cats here. And these guys too. We saw her. And oh my goodness, this is so adorable. Look at this one. This is sprouting from there. But some of these plants are best admired from a hey, got a mask on, but I don't think I can. I think I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Ah, uh, okay. So this is you. Uh, I'm filming for YouTube. 
I don't even know the species. I don't know if she's gonna be up for an episode. I would really love to talk to her, but her English is quite limited. These uh, growing out of this. I'm gonna get her contact information. I have a Thai friend. Reach out to her to see if she would like to talk about these plants. So she specializes here in Stephanias. There's all manners of Stephanias here. So this is her contact information in case you're trying to get in touch, but I will. I will get in touch with her. <laughs> On here, the codex looks proud. I think there's multiple points where they sprout. And I suspect these another example. These I have a feeling these are the flower. I want I just read that they're not the easiest to propagate, to pollinate, but I could be wrong. Look at this one. It's a beautiful scale-like skin. And then the leaves look like this and it's branching out like crazy. These are wonderful species. I hope that we can multiply them, spread them around, and do some conservation on them. Again, not the easiest. I think botanical gardens and experts can keep them alive, but for, for most of us, we can. This is a good size also. Some begonias. More begonias. This is the begonia corner, I guess. And this is very expensive you now. This is the uh, apishkia, but it's the pink ones. The goni haven't seen and there's just one and it grows out of that good looking cocoon this too look at that so male and female front Ferns. <laughs> this are uh, this is the corner. Oh my gosh! I oh, the stem is red. But look at all. This is all manners of fern. To just split this into two. So I'm gonna end this episode right. And I'll see you in the next one.